Welcome everyone, finally EGFC is back with our second week. My name is Upmind and I'm here followed by my good old friend Dor. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing well, man. Ready to cast some Super Smash Bros. How about you with the big old matchups we got coming right at you tonight? We'll break those down in a second, but which one are well, you want to break these down for us? How excited are you for these? Well, first of all, I mean, before we actually like go into like the ins and outs of the games, 
Um, I'm just excited in general for all of these games. Last week, we weren't able to see uh, RIT and Quinnipiac actually play. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see them again this week as that game is actually going to be canceled. So the 905 game uh, is actually going to be Siena versus Manhattan. So we'll have that to y'all, you know, as soon as we get that one. But first, we already have Canisius versus Maris College. And we have a little bit of a, um, you know, just a standard crew battle format, a little bit of standard, but it's also a little bit different. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of break it down for y'all. So we have a very unique format. Um, each team, of course, five players, and we're actually going to go through five BO3s. Each individual match victory will earn their team two points towards their team score, and each player earns an additional one point for each stock remaining when they win. At the end of the entire crew battle, the team with the most points wins. We're going to be tracking those points the entire time, so you guys don't need to, you know, do some quick maths all over the place. But yeah, Door, if I'm not mistaken, our teams are already pretty much ready and raring to go. So let's just jump into it, my friend. They are. And first up, it will be Kanishas versus Maris. First players on deck for them will be Flapjack and Abso. As we look to just get started in this game, what do you think we got coming out here? Kanishas versus Maris, two pretty sizable teams. I don't expect too much of a blowout. Here, lots of uh, competition either way, and a lot of these series, from what I've seen, have been going pretty late. If you don't solidify it by that third round, it will end up coming down to the last match, and at pretty much any point, a player's really able to clutch it out for his team, which is one of the strengths of this format. It's just being able to see those late game comebacks, especially when they start putting their captains in later on in the series, later on in the crew battle, and some of their stronger players back in towards the end. You can see some incredible comebacks. So that's what I really want oh, to Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, 100%. And uh, last week, Canisius, they were a little bit slow towards uh, a little bit slow towards the end and that's really what cost them at the end of the crew battle but they were still able to put up a really decent fight against a really decent team in Siena College one of our top three at the moment um, so Canisius last week we saw uh, Brett and Joe A actually you know pull out the W's for him and not only did they pull out the W's but you know Brett and Joe both winning out in 2-0 fashion not allowing the other team to, you know, garner any points off of them whatsoever. But again, it was, uh, I think Joe S was having, you know, wasn't exactly having the best time uh, last week. Uh, he went up against Aiden and he got five stock. Uh, but Ooh. yes, yeah, but we're already starting off here super, super strong. Uh, on your right, you see here, if I'm not mistaken, man. Ooh. We'll be married on the, on the right with Dr. Mario. Gotcha. As well as Canisius over on the opposite end. It's Flapjack versus Absolute Ricky is Canisius and Ryan will be representing Maris. They should be all playing on one switch. Beautiful, beautiful. So we're trying to make it back. And Dr. Mario, not exactly the best recovery in this game, so well, he's just gonna get kind of bopped for that one. But also, same thing with Crom. Crom has a very, very linear uh, sort of recovery, but I don't know if Dr. Mario can exactly exploit that. So for now, it's really just going to be, you know, the player on the way. If I'm not mistaken, his tag is Abso. Trying to kind of manipulate neutral for most of the time. And even then, it's a really hard matchup for him to just get in, period. Really has to use, you know, those projectiles. Yeah, those large disjointed hitbox that Krom's throwing out. That sword is is one hell of a threat, especially coming up against Dr. Mario with the back throw. Nearly takes him out. 138% now on the Krom. Gets the forward tilt. Just trying to make his way back to stage. Though. Every time he goes off stage, it's dangerous. And Dr. Mario loses another stock. Abso going down 3-1 to one now, trying to just get something off of Flapjack. Looks like he's having a rough time doing it, but this is his first chance to really get a solid edge guard in here, and he'll manage to do it right around 150%. Takes him out, makes the stocks 2-1 to one here. Maybe making that point disadvantage a little bit less bad, but right. trying to line up the damage, just Krom's sword is just such a threat. Right, absolutely. But, you know, in a crew battle, although, you know, maybe maybe he might not win. I, again, maybe best case scenario for, for Abzo here might just be to keep this within one stock. Purely... Purely just to keep his team in in terms of points and also, you know, maybe give yourself a little bit of confidence towards the next game because look at this huge lead here for the player on your left. Oh, Flapjack. 
Kind of swinging for the hills already, covering that ledge. Multiple tilts towards the Dr. Mario's range and even pulling out an uppy out of shield, but it's not going to connect. Again, Abso still pressuring shield. Uppy again, and he dodges. I think that's a popular option we've seen out of a lot of players, especially these past few months. The uppies out of shield from pretty much every character come out relatively quick, and they're somewhat safe. Krom's, like you mentioned, very linear upwards. No, nearly. No! Dropping too low, and that's going to be the third stock gone. And SD here out of Abso makes the points up two now for Canisius. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's just unfortunate. Um... You know that that's kind of expected to happen with the uh, with the Doctor Mario, just 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 a little bit. You know, it's it, it's troublesome to say the very least, but it's weird. It's definitely just weird. But we're gonna so keep now we moving do on. See the, the pick band coming out though, and so this is going to be the option for Maris to get their pick in. I think Kanisha should get a band or two in here real quick, but I think Maris taking it somewhere there. Mar Maybe a little bit more comfortable. Maybe get a character swap in, especially this matchup. Not particularly great for the Dr. Mario, but then again, is any. Yeah, yeah, there is a there is a very low amount of matchups that would actually, you know, kind of favor out the Dr. Mario. So again, it's a difficult pick. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a counter pick in the next one. Yeah, I would not be too surprised. I'm not sure where the character swap would go though for Abso. That's got to be the real question here, because whatever he's playing, it's got to be a pretty hard counter to the sortie that Blackjack's breaking out, because that distance is just not going to get any closer. And if anything that we've seen out of the last game has something to say about it, he doesn't know how to close that distance. So he's got to do it either with projectiles or playing a sortie himself. Mm -hmm. Apparently we are having a little bit of a delay issue, so we're going to be fixing that up as soon as possible, but... Uh, Dora, just kind of looking at the rest of our matchups for the day, and also maybe even this one going forward, if you have any, you know, notable players that you see, uh, you know, which which matchup or which game tonight are you, you know, excited to watch? So St. Peter's is really someone to keep your eyes on. It's someone that we haven't gotten to see too much of before. I would say RIT. RIT is really one of the standout schools uh, coming in to this whole season, but unfortunately not going to be able to get the, to see them play I think not for the second week in a row. RIT, yeah, they ended up forfeiting last yeah, no, week. It's, yeah, so, it's second week in a row that they haven't played. Yeah, and that's one of the teams to really keep an eye out for. And so seeing them go down two games like that is a little bit unfortunate, especially for them. I think they'll be able to make their way back into it. But as far as seeding goes for tournaments in the future, it looks a little rough for them. And they might have to really claw their way back into this one to get where I think they deserve to be. Right, absolutely. And it's... You know, that's that's just the thing with with forfeits in general. You put yourself in such a hole. And not only that, but with forfeits, you lose out on the maximum amount of points possible. That is that is probably the ultimate penalty about forfeiting. So, you know, hopefully we can we can kind of get ourselves a little bit of a change here for both teams, but it looks as if we're just gonna jump right into our next game. And we do have a character change, a really good one at that. Bowser being pulled out. I like this a lot more. Something a little heavier to just get in there, but not working for him so far. Already at 67% here. The Krom just laying him out. Finally gets a little bit of damage down on him, but at what cost? Finally into the back air. He's going to get to play this in the neutral, but again, he's just getting the... Yeah, he's getting beat up. Right, absolutely. And, you know, mm, recently we've seen, you know, optimal Bowser play be more reliant on his button. So what I mean by that is that his B button is gonna be so crucial. There we go, first up B, and you know, I was expecting a little bit more. Um, you know, your player on your right, the player from Marist, um, you know, if he holds that shield and just waits for an approach, he could just, he could just press B, you know what I mean? He could just press up B, and he immediately gets himself an easy 20 to 30%, but of course, Nicious taking full advantage, getting some damage in, getting the stock in, and oh, you gotta watch out for that. The, there was a Crom player last week that upbeat his way into a comeback just off of that ledge because the player forgot to di in. Yeah, and that's oh, a rough no. time. Oh, the smash tag target is <laughs> timed up there. But one thing you really want to mention here is the stage pick. Going to Battlefield with Bowser, of course, that top platform for the command grab gives it so much more kill potential. And at 116, this Krom could die to pretty much anything. 
the grab will land, but not quite Ooh. much on top of it, buying more and more space. 75% of extra credit, though, is anything here. No! Oh, no! Again! Second game in a row. Abso. The SDs. And, oh, that's just so unfortunate because he actually did have a pretty decent stock on him. And, uh, again, uh-oh. Okay, side beam! There he go. No, he grabbed him! No. Why would you grab him? All right, there you go. Great, great follow off stage. But no, you shouldn't be grabbing him there. A side yeah, beam I mean, would do it. You take it to the battlefield for a reason. You gotta be going for that command grab. Not right, having, even I think then. The strongest kit, though, that he's got here is going to be his neutral air trying. But it's just spacing out in this neutral is so difficult against the Krom. Ah, no, absolutely. And I also think that, you know, just this stage is also a really weird one for Bowser because you do talk about how that top platform will help him out. But it also might even go against his landings. Uh, Bowser, you know, nowadays his meta is actually more leaning towards, you know, kind of downer, believe it or not. And downer has a property where it actually bumps you up in terms of spacing. It bumps you up at the beginning frames. And that, if you do it, like, even slightly below those platforms, it will make you stuck there. And against a Krom, he'll just start up yet another just up air string or something of the sort. And... Again, you just see punish after punish after punish, and that's just going to be the game. A Another two stock there for our boy Brett, a.k.a. Flapjack. And, uh, you know, that's that's just our that's just our game there. Uh, Canisius coming out to a 6-0 to zero start. That's huge. Yeah, that's a rough time, Canisius already going up. But like you mentioned, Canisius do have some of their stronger players down at the end to try and bring some of those points back to... Of course, definitely within reach mm -hmm. for Marist. And it's still a scary thing, though, going up against players like Casey, like Epic Robin. Epic Robin is genuinely terrifying. And uh, sitting down at the end of the Canisius roster, you have a long way to go if you're Marist if you want to make this comeback. And real quick, just while we get a couple things figured out, we're having a couple connection issues. On the players end. So we'll get that figured out and we'll be back with you guys shortly.
Welcome back, everybody. Technical issues, I think, are all fixed up here, so we will have the second matchup of Kanishas versus Maris coming up for you here in a second. It's going to be Casey, the captain for Kanishas, up against Cabragdo coming out from Maris. Maris College going down six points there in our first match. Flapjack was able to two-stock Abso two times in a row with some uh, pretty solid crumb play and some unfortunate SDs coming out from Abso. So Cabragdo looking to bring it back for his team. You think he can do it up, mind? Uh, you know, I, I think so. Uh, Maris last week, don't, I mean, they, they didn't exactly get a chance to even play. So I don't actually know the performances or, or at least the skill level of really any of these Maris players at the moment. But watching Casey last week, he was able to keep it, you know, tit for tat against Sienna's Jason last week. Keeping things ex extremely even and getting himself the only, or, um, I think one of only two game threes that we saw all night last week in our broadcast so casey certainly one to look over or uh, not to glance over in a sense and again i'm looking for a good one from him um don't exactly know who he's gonna be playing with tonight because he seems to be very sporadic with his character picks yeah and it looks like we're just about ready to get in here so as we will see what the play is like it's pikachu versus game and watch here Casey will be here on the left side. Canisius getting in on Pikachu and Cabracto locking the game and watch. You want to break down this matchup for us? Absolutely. Uh, well, first of all, I, I I do play just just a, just a little teensy tiny bit of game and watch, and yeah, this matchup. <laughs> you know, my game and watch is not exactly that great, purely because I don't practice it too much. But that's that's my excuses. But, uh, but on your right here, Cabracto pulling out the game of watch in one of his best matchups. Um, purely because Pikachu, his, uh, you know, his main weapon is the Thunder Jolts and his multi-hits. Game of Watch can counter both of these. Almost everything, uh, almost everything that Game of Watch throws out is, uh, very, very low frame. Uh, so his nares, his back airs are going to be able to escape out of those multi-hits and you also saw right there his uppy also extremely great for for neutral against pikachu and also great against pikachu his bucket those thunder jolts are just gonna be food for that uh for that again for that bucket and it's gonna fill up super super quick and with pikachu being you know as light as he is he's gonna die a lot earlier to that oil slip or to that oil panic Yes, sir. But on the other side of the stage, it is KC, a little bit of a Pikachu aficionado himself, and racking up the percentage. It's the game watch at 117. He could die to anything here. Mm. So you know KC's searching for that force man. You just gotta space it right. Lands the loop, searches for the thunder, doesn't quite get what he's looking for. Now Ooh. ends it though. It's the force smash that does it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and of course, Game of Watch being as light as he is also, he's absolutely going to die at that percent. That F smash is super, super strong from the Pikachu. And, uh... I'm impressed you lasted that long. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Game of Watch, Game of Watch can last for, for, a pre, uh, for a pretty good amount of time. And the only real things in uh, in Pikachu's roster that can kill in neutral are, of course, is... Oh, no, that's an SD. Oh. That's... Marist oh. is just not feeling these SDs right now. No, man. And uh, I was about to say, uh, really, realistically, uh, Pikachu's smash attacks oh, and, his, uh, and his Thunderbolt is, you know, really the only things that can kill in neutral early. Um... You know, j just reliably. And look at this. Look at oh, this. He's soaring. Oh, Casey, you madman. Now he's just showing off. Up two stocks at 118% himself. Casey on the peak here has been putting on a show for us so far. Zoning out this Game & Watch so well. But now, Game & Watch just wants to finish off this one stock. Like we mentioned, every point's going to matter here. So if he can take one of them off of KC, it means a lot here for Maris <gasps> College. But, oh, nearly one <laughs> face yet again. Just barely dodges it with the key with that. Oh, the three! Land, knocks him up. Looking to finish it off. Casey trying to end it with three left. But this throw does not kill. 
Yeah, no, Game & Watch has a very... No, he just doesn't have any kill throws. I was about to say, like, maybe maybe one or two kill throws. No, he doesn't have any kill throws whatsoever. And it... Oh, no! Don't do it to him like that. Please don't pull out the nine. Nothing of that sort. But, dude, Casey, he's playing the perfect playstyle right now. He's the one setting the tempo. He's playing Spacey right now against Game & Watch. Forcing the Game & Watch to approach is probably one of the worst things that he can do, if I'm being completely honest. Game & Watch is a very, oh my gosh, oh. bait and punish type character. And two SDs in a single game. Ah, uh, you hate to see it. There's got to be something in the water over there at Maris. <laughs> <laughs> That's, they're, they're drinking the same thing, whatever it is. Two SDs. That is painful there from Cabracto, but... Honestly, SD's aside, I've got to hand it over to KC. That Pikachu looks solid. Like you said, spacing him out, making the Game & Watch chase him into the forward smashes was so detrimental to Cabrito's gameplay. Regardless of the SD's, he was racking up the percentage. No, absolutely. And again, like, like I mentioned before, Game & Watch is very bait and punish based. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, down smash... Uh, you know, down smash is supposed to come out early. Uh, up B certainly leads into a lot of things. If you up B at the right angle, it leads into up air. If you up B at an early percent, that leads to nair combos. It's just ridiculous how many options Game & Watch has out of punish. But the amount of options that Pikachu has in terms of uh, defense is also pretty huge. And also Pikachu um has a large amount of options off stage which is incredibly important against game of watch who actually has one of the best recoveries in this game and we actually saw you know casey somehow restrict uh the uppy early on that quote-unquote sd was very punishable and was also extremely pressured or in a situation that was pressured from casey at that moment so Cabracto, a lot of things to think about at this point as Casey currently has his number. Yeah, and we will see Cabracto with the stage pick. But I think like you like you sort of been mentioning, the neutral game for both of these characters is not particularly strong. So a lot of it comes down to how much they're getting off of the punish. And we saw time and time again, the thunder started landing big for Casey there at the end. And Cabracto just really wasn't able to convert anything off of the damage that he was getting. No sort of combos coming out, not able to keep the Pikachu in the air, not able to ledge guard really at all because that Pikachu recovery is so potent. And so it looks like we'll be going back to final destination here as it's Cabracto's pick. I'm curious to see, though, whether or not he brings out a character swap. Yeah, the character swap wouldn't exactly be that great because, again, like I like I mentioned, Pikachu uh, v Game Watch is one of his best uh, is one of his best matchups. But you know, really thinking about it, it just it just comes down to the play style. It comes down to situational things, and there you go. He's gonna switch out. He wasn't exactly using the bucket, you know, as efficiently as he would have liked to seen it. Also, he wasn't exactly having a great time in terms of approaches. So he's actually going to switch over to a Ness, someone who is a, a again, even more bait and punish like, but also extremely oppressive to more defensive characters. Yeah, lots of big combos once he gets the punish. The grabs have been landing for him so far, and with the first percentage leads, I think we've seen out of Maris all day. 59% on the Pikachu. He's looking a lot better on this Ness. Yeah, but here comes the Pikachu. Ooh, I would have liked to have seen a down throw there. Oh no! Are you kidding no. me? Not again! The fourth SD from Marist in, I would like to say, four games? They're four for four. <laughs> they're, they're looking like they're just donating stocks here over to Kanish, just handing them over left and right. But oh. Pikachu still Oh has no, the, the loops! Oh, Give the me loops. the loops! The oh, loops. I can't believe Casey stopped there, but it's still reliable damage. All right, finally breaks it with the neutral. More Pikachu loops. Pikachu starting to rack on the damage, and these combos are just huge coming out from KC. He's landing them so consistently. Looks a loop in a back air. Says no, go away. Stops the recovery. Nice. Tries to punish with the yo-yo, and it looks like he might just get it. The yo-yo. The yo-yo is racking up the damage right now. Yeah, damage. But he was honestly just looking for a kill there and that down smash because Ness is actually one of the more lighter characters in that game or in this game could have actually punished in a sense. But again, Ness still following with that up B and it actually runs out at the perfect time. Casey's still alive and still looking for a kill. Dash attack, an incredibly strong move oh. off of Pikachu. That down air, not killing. 
It's a shame that one didn't spike, but now both players oh. certainly within kill percentage. Pikachu searching for it though, that dash stack could end it here. 119%. This nest could be going out at any point in time. The forward oh air. Lands trying to search it down, but he just can't get himself back in neutral forward slash lands. And it's Casey taking another stock down. Three to one now at 147. He's searching for the first three stock tonight. The grab though, back throw. That'll do it here for Cabragto. Yeah, no, this is this is just prime Pikachu play, and I can tell you this much. Uh, just two weeks ago, ESAM just moved to our region, so we're looking at, you know, I, I'm watching pretty much on a daily basis, best Pikachu main in the world. Casey pulling out some of his tactics. These multi-hits, these strings, these combos, these drag downs, all of them. It's prime Pikachu gameplay that you just love to see, and his bait and punish, his spacing is just so good at the moment. Yeah, that forward smash spacing has been perfect all night. I don't know if we've seen... Oh, no. No He's way! That's a kill! For the that's it! Aliens, the forward air. KC styling on Cabragto for the last stock. Can't believe it. That was beautiful from KC. Again, another dominant performance from him as last week he also had more or less the same scoreline. Yeah, really already 2-2. Two, two. Making the points line up here. 12 points on the board for Canisius. And now it's looking more and more impossible for Maris. But I I mean, you have to address these SDs coming out for Maris. At some point, it's not just unlucky, you know? At some point, you need to start thinking it's getting into their heads. It's, de it's really detrimental to the way they're playing. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, even on that first stock, you saw that, you know, um, off of the jab or off of the T-jolts, uh, the Nest did have an opportunity to up -y. His jump may have been gone, but even then, he still had an opportunity to uppy, and unfortunately, he just didn't make it back. You know what I mean? It happens, um, but the SDs, they need to stop. <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually becoming a problem here for Maris, as they're dropping incredibly, un, like, you know, just not needed stocks, and so much so that I can actually point out, you know, a little bit of a stat here. Um, if, in comparison... Canisius ended up losing to Siena College last week. Ended up losing to uh, Siena College last week. And Siena College had a scoreline of 16. At the moment, Canisius has already re reached 12 points. That's already more than last week. They had 10 points the entire time. They were only, to win, uh, they were only able to win out two games last week. Brett and Joe A. Ting, the two of them. And... I, I, Canisius is already reaching a threshold where they could just take away the entire crew battle within just another game here. Yeah, at some point it does become impossible. The most points you can end these with is, I believe, eight by the end of it. If you get two three stocks here, you can start to rack them up for your team. But within those last two final battles, you can only gain a maximum of 16 points. And so if you close out that third game the same way you have the previous two for Canisius... Uh, you're looking like you're going to close it out early. Yeah, so again, we are just going to be waiting here as we go through picks and bans and whatnot. Uh, we're going to go into yet another very small break, probably like two minutes just to get some water in. Hydration is key, everyone. Just wanted to thank uh, our sponsors for this season, uh, the Yukon Gaming Club and the Yukon School of Engineering. Thank you guys for being with us so far. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes.
All right, everybody, we're back at it. It's Canisius versus Maris. Game three, Casey and Brett have put on a clinic so far up against this Maris side, but Maris looking to bring it back. It's their boy, Jack, locking it in. It will be Canisius in the red and Marist in the blue, locking the Mario. Already 46% down, though. It's Jack versus Mike. Yeah, this is a tough matchup here. Uh, for Mario, at least, because, again, Mario does have uh, the options in terms of at least the fireball in terms of approaches. And he's also super, super fast, super impressive, especially uh, with strings, as you already saw right there. We almost saw a solid starter with an up air and a forward air in neutral. Not something that you usually see, but using to its full advantage. And this is a problem that Ness exclusively has. He has a very, very tough time landing. So you're just seeing there, Jack like a homing missile, covering the ground and making sure that the nest can't get back into neutral. Yeah, the second this nest starts landing shots, those aerials start comboing, the damage starts going down, 94% still on this Mario. It feels like he's been in the driver's seat the whole time, but the percentages say otherwise. It's pretty even here, and both these characters not the heaviest, so we could see stocks go early. We know that head out of the Mario has so much kill potential, but the nest is pressuring so well with the thunders. Oh, we already see there a down air. Oh, he's sending the Ness upwards, getting super, super close to a kill here. Both of these characters back air. Mario getting a press of off stage, waiting for the double jump to come in. That's amazing pressure here from the Maris player. Great patience, great discipline to wait back, reset his jump, and get the back air while the Ness is in free fall. Beautiful work. I love what Jack's doing here, putting so much pressure in on the nest. He's trying to avoid playing that aerial game, just keep the nest in the air. But now he's got to land on stage himself, and it won't be. He'll get hit by the up air. The nest takes him out, makes the stocks 1 1. Only 9% of extra credit moving into stock 2 here. You know, we kind of we kind of take any sort of advantage that we can because, you know, Mike on your left, he was up by quite a bit of percent. So to see Jack make that comeback, you know, pretty reliably there. And look at this, jab lock. Oh man, into a down smash, still going, getting the fair, not hitting in the right area. And an SD, this time in the hands of Canisius. Maris thanking their lucky stars that finally luck is on their side. Yeah, I mean, you know that fireball coming out of Jack really screwed with the recovery there. Ness right. Is some, Ness's recovery is something that a lot of people have dialed into them. So you, you slow that down, you break it up a little oh! bit. You see a lot of players come. Oh, the up air chains. Oh, look, he searches for the up B even. Doesn't quite get it. But gets a certain solid amount of percentage down onto this Ness. Now looking to make it back to uh -oh. bad hits. 77% onto Mario. And now he's got to land on the stage. The BK Rocket goes for it. Uh... But the F to counter. Both players at 91%. Yeah, no, this is super tough. Again, some jabs coming in. Now the Mario getting impressive off stage happens all the time. He even trying to line up that forward air again. Oh, using the cape, banning it away. Opportunity here for Maris to potentially get themselves finally on the board. And what a way to get themselves on the board. Two stocks up, potentially. Again, Mike running away, trying to get the stock. Jack following Mike off stage. Uh, he's back, the uppy, what? Still alive, and, take and another one! Oh, the Huppy gets oh. onto the stage. He's searching for the up smash to finish it off, and that's all it's gonna take is a massive head out of Mario. And now on the disadvantage, Ness has to make it back on stage, but will he be able to recover? No! no. He back that's a two-stock win for Jack. Another SD. That's Mike going down, and Jack, again, we absolutely take those Marist. They were on the receiving end of, you know, so many SDs, so many unfortunate scenarios for them that now Jack coming out with it, not only a great performance, but, you know, also, you know, a little bit, first of all, taking away the jump from Mike a little bit early on, that was a great move. No matter what, even if it wasn't SD in the end, there's a great move, great oppression, and then at the end, taking his opponent down to a super high percent, even if that wasn't an SD, it still was going to line up for a kill within the next, you know, couple of seconds of that move. So, overall, Jack winning that out fair and square in a sense. Uh, again, a little bit of an asterisk, but still two points are on the board finally for Marist. Yeah, and that's how you get back into it. If you can get another one of those two stocks, it would mean so, so, so much for this point differential. Two points on the board is nothing to scoff at here for Marist, but you've got to start getting those win points in. You get two points here for winning that best of three, and those really start to add up because if you start ending these games at one stock apiece, uh, going to game three, 
you start those points evening out. And so two points can be a massive boost to the differential. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we are still waiting up here for this next game. Picks, uh, picks and bands coming in. And it seems like Canisius, they choose to go over to Battlefield. So interesting here. If we do get... Uh, the same match, uh, the same matchup that we got before, and we are we're gonna get the Ness be the Mario. This one is a little bit weird because for for Battlefield to work out better for a Ness is kind of awkward because Mario, one of his best maps, is Battlefield by a long shot. I mean, you know he's searching for those up air chains. We got a little sneak peek at it in the right. last match. He went for those style points and. He's going to look to do it here again. The second he gains that advantage state, those platforms are just going to be so tough for Ness to make his way through. PK Thunder trying to space himself out, though. Ness just has to find a way into this match and keep his distance from Jack. Yes, sir. And again, I mentioned that Mario, you know, is pretty good on this stage. But of course, there's a reason why a Ness would pick out this one. He's also looking for some strings. Uh, up airs are going to be really prevalent. These multi-hits and the fact that, you know, Ness is very hard hitting in terms of, you know, in terms of his aerials. He's really just going to be using those targets as oh essentially launch God. pads. Oh, that's nuts. All right. Uppy. <laughs> getting used even baiting out a little bit over to the right reading him like a book and uh yeah that's the stock nutty at 60 percent jack just oh back in <laughs> gonna happen again the gimp off the ledge the up be in the wrong direction and jack's down two stocks it's a disaster here for maris oh my god that was just so good for mike uh, i mean two kills using up b uh, you know, on one occasion, using himself as a missile, and then in the second one, using, you know, using kind of the multi-hit property of that uppy just to take away that jump. And of course, Mario, one of the, uh, one of the weakest, I would like to say, one of the weakest recoveries in this game. He just gets super, super punished there. And now Mike, huge opportunity to even extend the lead here for Kanishas. If he could potentially get himself a three stock. We see a couple of fares. Even trying to get himself an up B. Oh, might have hit himself towards it, but actually missed out. Oh. And oh, Jack, great response there with the up smash. That's going to be it. And honestly, one of Mario's most potent kill options is that up smash. That dome is a lot bigger than No up. way. That's not a kill. What? The rocket does it again. Ah, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, I had no idea that at 40, the Mario was at 40 and he was at the other side of the stage. So Ness coming back with the up, he hits himself. And I can't believe that killed. Might have been, might have been a little bit of sus DI, but I don't know. How well, did I'll it? I'll tell you, my roommate plays more Ness than any That's person nuts. has a right to. And that, the up B, the PK rocket, when you hit yourself with it, has such large kill uh, kill potential. And at low percents, especially we, what we saw to Mike there, with both of his PK rocket kills, were huge mind games. He was sending the PK thunder up towards Jack, trying to just get him out of the air, trying to convince him to use that dodge. And the second he did, he loops it back around, hits him with the PK rocket when he's least expecting it. So if you don't have the DI ready, if you're just expecting the PK thunder to come and hit you normally you won't be ready for it when it hits you at that 40%, at the 60%, and going down two stocks to it, as well as an SD jack, just... I, I hesitate to call that game unfortunate because Mike just looked incredible. Yeah, no. No, I mean, yeah, sure. It, it's unfortunate if you're a fan of Maris here, but... Um, <laughs> after that first game, after seeing kind of, the, kind of the clap from the Maris player, seeing the clap, if I'm not mistaken, from Jack... And then Mike coming back, getting a clap back, like you putting down the Uno reverse card, essentially like that. That that's just too good. That's just too too good. And ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves our first game three of the night. Ah, oh, this is intense. This is already getting intense. I mean, if Canisius somehow wins out this one, uh, they at least have themselves a platform of opportunity to get themselves a comeback. Yeah, even coming close here on the third game is super duper critical for Maris, keeping themselves in it. As long as Canisius isn't ending these games with those six point leads like we saw in the first two games, it's huge. Jack managing to take up a two stock win in game one is big enough in itself, but he really wants to close out. Like I mentioned, those two point win advantages are so important here as we get later into the series and Maris has to start racking those up if they want to win. But I think 
I'm suspecting a little bit of a character swap, but we haven't quite gotten the pick ban out yet. We know that Kanishis is banning Lilat and Yoshi's melee, so going into it, the options are a little bit less for Maris, but I think they'll find something that they like, but I think we're also going to see a character swap come out from Jack. Yeah, surely. And um, I was again, that, that <laughs> I was really interesting to see, you know, what was the dynamic behind the uh, behind the stage pick? And I guess we saw it, huh? I, I didn't take into account how good up B is with Ness on Battlefield. I mean, one of the things is like, it's not the most potent move. The PK Rocket is a very, very obvious move if you're not right. expecting it. But Mike's brain is so large. And just <laughs> so massive. Out of his Canisius sized head <laughs> that he manages to take two stocks at under 70% with it. And that was just some incredible nest play. And you know what? We're going to get to see more of it now as we get here into our first game three of the night. It's Ooh. Mike. It's Jack going at it for everything. Uh, yes, Yoshi's Island. Yeah, essentially for everything. Because if, uh, if Kanisha's wins, uh, if Kanisha's wins here, that's essentially the W confirmed. Like, without a doubt. And also, that PK Rocket almost connecting at 53. Almost a kill. And the Mario, actually, really good discipline. Not actually using the jump. Again, still staying alive. Even pressuring with these nares and up airs. Again, really good moves in terms of shield poking. But again, more oppression with this up B. Just taking advantage of the fact that he literally has a platform over him as uh, literally just a roof. Oh no, oh, he- no. Oh, oh! Barely connecting. He's alive. Coming back. Up smash. Still following midair. Still real close, but that up air. Super, super potent. And at about 120, that's going to be the kill. And Jack's starting to make his way back into this. 73%. He got a bit of a slow start here up against the nest, but he can still make his way back into it. It's more than reasonable. 20% of extra credit, though, here for Mike. He's looking hot right now in game uh, three. But right. that head is always a threat. Oh, my God. The fair's all over the place. And oh, my God. The PK rocket. That's going to kill. Are you kidding me? Another stock here for Mike as Canisius College almost literally confirming their W in this crew battle. Without even going through into our fourth game, we are three games in right now, Dor. And Mike is just so deep into Jack's head right now. The PK Rockets are so terrifying. And 111%, this nest could go down pretty soon here. It does mean a lot if Jack can take another stock off. Uh. But he nearly gets skimped again by the Thunder. Sending it forward. Though. He's got to find a way to finish the stock, and it's almost certainly going to be an up smash. Nah, uh, has to find it. And he's lining it up. Yeah. Oh, even using the cape, getting that up away, lining up, trying to get that bait and punish from before the fireballs. Wow, the fireball ended up hitting Mike towards the stage and stage spiking him. That angle was just super weird, but it just works. Mike at least taking away one stock, or uh, I'm sorry, Jack keeping away one stock to at least keep things a little bit even here. And uh, again, still pressuring, getting some jabs in. Forward aerial, no way! He's dead! That's the equalizer! You've got to be kidding me, Jack! This, oh, the read! He says, get down there! Sends him down with the forward air. Now searching for another one. This is doable here for Jack with the back throw. Nah, but the back throw. Closes it out easy. It's Mike ending the series. I mean, that that's just damage restricted, though. We were looking at a potential, you know... 18 to 2 lead but uh but instead it at least get uh it at least get restricted to if i'm not mistaken 17 to 2 which again isn't exactly too great again jack putting up an incredible fight probably the best that we've seen from marist all night but even then kanishas they have such a strong roster right now i just didn't expect this no they've shown up and they've showed up to win mike proving that he can do just the same as Flapjack and Casey did beforehand. But up next, it's going to be Randomane versus Dante. And Randomane is uh, one of the most entertaining characters I think we've seen in EGFC. He's got a wide hero pool. We've seen things like Incineroar come out of him and absolutely stomp with them. We've also seen <laughs> a few other characters. I think he picked up the Pikachu for a couple of rounds. He played, I believe, a little oh. bit of Game & Watch and... Oh, just my all God. sorts of things coming out of this man and 
So I'm excited to see what he pulls out of his back pocket here as we get into game four. We're just waiting for some pick bands to come through. But uh, what what are you looking for here? I mean, I don't know what to look for. You just said that this guy just plays a bunch of random characters. Uh, you mentioned Incineroar. I would like to see an Incineroar. You mentioned the Game of Watch. I kind of like Game of Watch. Depends on their play style because if they play, you know, super boring and, you know, Game of Watch is weird to me, all right? <laughs> because you have players like Meister that make the character look fun, which is weird, right? You know, it, they, they're they not supposed to look, quote unquote, fun. But uh, then you have, you know, more more players that are sort of new to Game of Watch that kind of abuse his more strong moves. Um hopefully we don't see that from random main if he does end up pulling out the game of watch but what i really want to see at least is a fight from marist because they don't exactly have too much of a chance getting back into this one even if they do pull out two uh pretty perfect games like two stocks all over the place they would still lose they would yeah, need... Max, I can do here 16 points. And to the 17 that Canisius has racked up on the board already with these three impressive last matches, uh, Random and Zucchini unfortunately can't do it. But they can get points back for Maris, which matter right. going later on here into this season. So Random and Zucchini, I think, are the players to anchor down this Maris team. They are, in my opinion, probably two of the strongest ones, Zucchini especially. Random main, though, has this twinge of just... He could show up at any point in time and just roll over a match. But again, we are still waiting here for some picks and bans. I think I think we should actually already be ready to go. We just need a pick at this point. We've already banned. We have Kanishik's College banning out Battlefield. And we see a Town in Smashville ban coming in from Maris College. Uh, do you have any clue who this next guy is? Have you seen uh, this next guy from Maris play? His name is Dante, a.k.a. Daku Sky. Daku Sky, Dante. I feel like I've seen him play once or twice. And that's the thing with this Kanisha's roster is every player has that potency. We've seen it out of the first three players. And I'm sure we'll certainly see it with the next ones. But like I mentioned, Randomly and, and Zucchini, I think, are the people to step up to the table. And when you're down this far in points... I think we are, we can see some exciting stuff come out for them as I think they just go for the nuts as far as uh as far as combos go. It's random and breaking out the pack, man. We've seen this from in the past and it's a fun one to watch. I think you're in for a treat up mine. Ah, I'm excited because we're already getting right into it. It's gonna be Z oh what am I looking at? Pac-Man v Zelda. Okay, um Pac-Man is not one of the characters that you mentioned. It's all coming back to me. Dante breaking out the Zelda. We, we saw it from him in previous weeks. And the Pac-Man coming out from Random Man is one of his favorites. Unfortunately, not managing to list it. But he is, he has shown that he is more than capable of being a threat on this character. His name is Random Man. So, uh, yeah, now Pac-Man is uh, certainly a very interesting character to say the least. Uh, every one of his items that you see out of that, uh, of that neutral B have different properties. And... Again, already pulling out the key early. That's a uh, that's a new one. Usually at these early percents, you st uh, you tend to see the Galaxian being pulled out. But again, we're just gonna keep going through the motions as both players now up to forty nine percent. Oh, try to get the hard read with the F smash, Pac Man. He doesn't want to work for his bread. He wants uh, he wants the easy way out. Yeah, I mean, well, that's how Pac-Man works, is a lot of these, I'd say, semi-cheesy things that we see coming out from them. A lot of the time, Pac-Man has been being seen a lot as of recent, pretty, I'd say, revolutionized by the Japanese player, T, who's been running right. a rampage over there on the character. But it's led to a lot of characters starting to, or a lot of players starting to understand a lot of Pac-Man's combos and a lot of the more uh, deeper play styles that you can break out with them. Playing around those item combos, playing around that fire hydrant spacing really effectively, and you could dish out the damage at 119%. This Zelda could be going at any second. It definitely could, but again, Pac-Man's main kill moves is realistically, you know, is uh, at this point, it would be oh, that, first of all, his side B, his down B, and his smash attacks. Also, of course, the key. 
so he does have a lot of options to go and it just so happened to be that zelda ended up falling into one of the most unorthodox one uh unorthodox ones that side b took forever and he still got a kill off of that yeah the power pip is a real threat at those higher percentages but now one ten percent this is where the zelda's gonna struggle a little bit it's finishing off these stocks and the good options here will probably be the up smash a little bit of the forward smash will be able to do it lands a tilt lines up the knight and so here comes the edge guard a decent opportunity for the zelda but pac-man can just live off stage forever and side b still coming in i mean pac-man is you know, relatively light he's not one of the heaviest characters in this game um, Zelda, however, one of the lightest in this game, uh, but also extremely heavy hitting. You see right there trying to bait out that up B, that first scoop and that second hit can actually like, uh -oh. oh no, no punish and most likely going to make it back. That trampoline super, super potent, but I'm actually incredibly surprised that, uh, we saw the Zelda player not actually punish there off of the free fall. Yeah, right around 150% though, the Pac-Man does end up going down at 76% of extra credit landed down onto Canisius here. Dante on the Zelda is not looking quite as hot as his counterpart so far in random and like I mentioned, still a threat. He's searching for that bell and he will end the stun. It's big! Looking for the upper change now. He's caught the bell yet again. He's still got it loaded up. He's just setting up combo after combo. He's waiting for this water to push him. He's looking for it. He's just Oh, I love this. Option. No! Oh, oh my god! god. Oh, up smash! No, but the up smash getting... Oh my god, the up smash actually getting paused by the bell. So, both the weapon and both his downfall. But even then, he's still able to get the kill. Um, yeah, that was a weird interaction to say the least. But the Z drop was nuts. Yeah, and he's really searching for these creative options. That was what you see out of a lot of these Pac-Man players breaking out some funky combos using that fire hydrant in lots of different ways and what we saw there out of random man was him using it as a, a sort of threat just a spacing tool and nice night out of dante Ooh, oh no he finishes off not... with the blast sends him flying off stage too far to the side search for the galaxian combo but instead it's gonna be dante sending a message just catching it I can't believe that he actually made this comeback. And purely because I mentioned before that Zelda, an extremely hard-hitting character, or although extremely light, um, Zelda's back air is incredibly strong. Of course, pulling out Phantom. Phantom does a solid, like, 25-30 damage, depending how uh, how developed he is. And, of course, smash attacks, his, um, her up air so many so many weapons just to do an insane amount of damage and you see right there try to go for a down throw into a backer that would have been so much damage but great di coming out from the pac-man just setting them up so up for victory here random main trying to get into this one but he's got to gain himself an advantage first and setting himself up with the hydrant will easily be shielded here by dante Ooh. using that neutral b just gonna tell him get off of me right now <laughs> and these phantom knights are zoning really really well but he's got to turn it into something he's got to start throwing the blast out got to start putting this pac-man on the back foot because right now dante's just playing on the defense you're absolutely right, and ooh, a back air actually trading out in the oh. Phantom! Randomain going down, although he was up the entire game. That has to be disheartening now. Uh, mathematically, at this point, we could say that Canisius has won this crew battle, first of all. Second of all, Marist, this seems to be a very common theme for them. They're so close, but yet so far. For the past like two sets, three sets, we've seen every game go down to the wire, go down to last hit, and somehow they just can't pull through. Yeah, they haven't been able to yet. Jack pulled it off in the first game, but not in the second or third. Wasn't able to finish off there. And same thing with Random Man. Bought himself a pretty sizable advantage, but just not able to close out the stocks. And I think even there at the end, dying at a fairly low percentage. I'm not sure the DI was really on point there. And now it's sitting with random main in the driver's seat as far as pick bands go so i think we might see a character swap might see something a little different come out of him because that's been the looks he's given us for the entire season and i'm excited to see it again but i'm not sure whether or not he'll be able to close it out yeah i don't know i don't know either again that that zelda looked you know very you know very i guess you could say developed by the end you know he got the download in a sense but dante again he 
It just seemed as if at, at the beginning he was really feeling out his opponent. Rando Main was pulling out a lot of very effective combos. And it just seemed as if Dante had more stage advantage near the end, which is not something that you want to be on the, you know, opposing end of. Because Zelda and stage control are not two things that should go together. The Phantom, the projectiles, the damage, all of it, it just hurts so, so much to watch. And uh, Pac-Man, very restricted in terms of options, um, you know, with, with approaching. He has his projectiles, but... You know, they, they take forever to come out. They're very predictable in a sense. And Dante's movement at the very end was pretty much stellar, dodging everything that Randomane threw at her. And now it's Randomane locking on the Wario. I don't actually think we've seen this come out Wario. of the Wario. Yeah, Randomane. You know what I mean? He has random essentially in his name. So I guess expected? I guess unexpected? Who knows? Again, Wario being pulled out against the Zelda. This is another weird matchup that I think could work if Random Main has developed this character because Wario's combos are so good in this game. Yeah, and I like the Battlefield stage pick, although it can be a little bit misleading as far as where the advantage is going. That Phantom Knight hits straight through those bottom two platforms, and a lot of players really underestimate the hitbox that that sword end up, ends up going at. So unless Wario can close the distance here, these platforms could be a little bit rough for him to land on. Him more so just the down tilt, but not quite gonna find him now. Wario starting to land the combo, starting to put this Zelda in a disadvantage stage. He's gonna keep running away, but these Phantom Knights are just spacing Ooh. so well. Lands the blast, searching for a second. Wario making his way in towards them. Nice neutral air, spaces it out well. And you see Dante using every second he has yeah. to just chuck out night after night. Yeah, no, this is... This is essentially why the Wario matchup is pretty bad against Zelda. Um, again, super hard to get in. Wario essentially has no options in terms of projectiles. Um, he can come in potentially on the motorcycle or uh, on the motorbike. But even then, that's not very reliable whatsoever. And he's actually really easy to, to end up killing. Especially with the fact that Zelda has two, like, Nair-type moves. So, of course, her Nair is a little bit of a twirl. And her Down B, her Reflector, actually also acts as more or less the same hitbox as her Nair. So, good to block against those motorcycles. And whenever the Wario ends up actually approaching, he would actually, he would actually just get pelted by projectiles by the time he's there. And uh, we kind of see that already. Dante doing incredibly good at the moment. Great stage pressure. Rando main. Don't really know about this pick. I've got to say, one of Wario's biggest tools is his neutral air. If you can hit neutral air on the rising, you'll get a bunch of hits off on the way down. But Zelda, with that shield, with that B right there, will just be able to break that about midway through and just deal back the damage onto the warrior that he dealt onto her and he's struggling to close the distance at all searches for the wall but misses it and that's a huge ability gone now for jack yeah and, yeah no absolutely yeah random main shouldn't have even like pulled it out at that percent either and look at this i've i've never seen a wario hold on to motorbike for that long not gonna lie um but yeah no waft is usually something that you do at more of an early percent purely because of you know I guess cheese in a sense, but you also just get the full extension of the move period and look at that Random main just gets clapped immediately again the full hit of back air connecting and that is 100% gonna be a kill against the lighter character like Wario and that Random back air is just brutal into the bike and it feels like Random main just has nowhere to go throws the bike But he just can't space out the Zelda properly he tries to engage with the neutral air, but it doesn't move properly the up air is We'll start to land here for Zelda, and the more percentage lands on this Wario, the less and less confident I am. The Knight out of the air, nice little get off me tool coming out from Dante at 107% himself. He's not really anywhere near going down unless he can get a half charge waft onto him. I don't see random and kind of closing this one out yet. Searches for the teleport combo, doesn't quite land it, but does space out the Wario now. Both players at even percentage. This could be a three stock head in the way of Dante. He's looking to close it out. Misses. Searches for the four smash, and that's what's going to do it. Random main goes down three stocks to zero in game two. In a set where we where we needed to see Random main actually pull out uh, a six stock, essentially. So a, an extremely flawless game out of this one. 
we're going to see him going down. And I'm looking at our score line here. Uh, yeah, believe it or not, this is the most points that we've seen any team pull in, uh, in the entire league so far. Canisius is going to be coming out with a 23-point score line. And we're not even done with the, uh, with, you know, the crew battle here, folks. We still have another game to go. And it's going to be Epic Robin versus Zucchini. Zucchini, the captain here for Maris, looking to put a win on the board for him, bring home a little bit of that victory for his own team. And, you know, that's a huge morale boost going into, into future weeks if he can pull it off. But Epic Robin has nobody to slap at. You know what, Upline, I'm going to give you I'm gonna give you one guess at what Epic, Epic Robin reigns. Roy. So close. Oh. I, you know, I thought you had it there for a second, but... I guess we'll just have to see when we get into the game. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. So, in the meantime, we're going to go into a quick break. Again, hydration is key, ladies and gentlemen. Go get yourselves a little bit of water. And I'm just going to appreciate here our sponsors for the season, the Yukon Gaming Club and the Yukon School of Engineering. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Upman, joined here by Dor. We'll be right back with Game 5 of this crew battle between Canisius and Marist.
And welcome All back. Right. Like, oh, whoa. Am I going to do it or you're going to do it, buddy? You, you, you go ahead and take Hell it. Hell yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're back into it. We have Byleth on our screen. Hmm. That's, uh, that's a new one now coming out, but it is up against Epic Robin, who is a man of his own name. You weren't able to guess before, but it unfortunately is Robin. Oh my oh. god, the Arcfire and Arcfire and up air combo. That's a lot of damage. Yes, sir. Robin just so happens to be one of the uh, one of the more snazzy characters. The strings and ladders. Uh, you know, <laughs> strings and ladders. Kind of like snakes and ladders, but almost literally. Um, again, Robin more it's a lot more technical in a sense of course has to keep track of you know the spell books and whatnot but byleth it's just a just a heavy hitting character in general yeah every single move is going to take you or your shield out if you're not able to avoid it but right now both players are 100 percent everyone's in kill range and loading Ooh. it up it's going to be huge out of Epic Robin gets the first stock and at 94%. It's looking pretty good for the Kings. Oh, oh the no! Well, it's Robin. not going to be a kill, but look at that. What, 21%? Really? I thought it was going to be a lot more. But you know what? We take those. He's taking up the driver's seat right now. Oh, that the actually. Just coming out. It feels like the Bile can't get anywhere. Just too slow to do anything. Yeah, out of the shield break, he could have done a lot more. For example, a free Nosferatu for that free heal. Um, also, Nosferatu at low percents actually leads in to a couple of combos. So, would have, uh, would have preferred to see that uh, potentially from uh, from Epic Robin. But, but for now, we see an intense lead here as the Byleth struggling to get back on stage and struggling to approach. Finally, back in neutral, and he just gets denied again. The F smash. I think we're just kind of starting oh, to see. Oh, oh my Lord. God, the arc fire into forward smash. That'll take a second stock here off of the Violet. And we're starting to see the disadvantage of running the Violet. Finally, able to finish off that stock, but it's just too slow to really do anything against this Robin. Robin, not a particularly fast character in its own right, but definitely faster than this Violet right now because everything he's doing is just beating Zucchini to the punch. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. lands. Gets him a little bit of healing, searching for that cross stage arc fire. On FD is not really anything to block. It's a pretty good stage pick here for Zucchini. The thunders can just zone repeatedly, and Zucchini can get nowhere near. He will be canceling a lot of stuff with these arrows, realizing that he can space for himself. And of course, that fully charged arrow, a pretty solid kill option in and of itself, but. I think Epic Rob is just gonna take this time on his own to charge up that thunder as much as he wants. He sends it at 100%. Not quite gonna take the stock here. Byleth a little too heavy for that, but now he's searching for that Arc Fire Forward Smash combo that we saw in the first stock. Byleth, though, saying, Get off me, using himself to buy some time. It's just a matter of time, though, before the Arc Fire ends it off. And to see Kinesius get themselves not only another game here, but another two stock on their hands. That is just rough. Maris going down 25 to 2. And it's not over yet. Epic Robin is looking to make that gap even larger right now. He's got another game lined up in this best of three. It could be three if Zucchini manages to take this one. But the way that went without a character swap, I don't see this one turning around. All right. What are the odds here that we reach 30 points? He would need a three so stock. He's gonna take a three stock. But yeah. what? What would? Do you think that Kanishis can do it? I think a lot of it depends on whether or not Zucchini Hero swaps here. Hmm. Uh, the Bile right. does not look particularly comfortable on. It is a new character. I think he might be playing for fun because they're so far down in points right now. But if they matter about, if they care about not getting thirty to two'd, <laughs> I think you have to swap. Right. You're absolutely right. Let's see if it actually comes in, though, as, again, we do get, you know, kind of pick some bands at this point, and, uh, ooh. Yeah, I, I see a message from you. Byleth is bueno? Is, is Byleth I, bueno? I'm asking. In, in your, is Byleth bueno? It didn't look very bueno. It is, is Byleth bueno, in your opinion? Uh, I, see, here's the thing. The only time I've actually gotten to play against Byleth has been in twos. Which mm. Byleth is a monster in. Right. Because it just controls so much of the stage and applies so much pressure. 
But in singles, it's a complete other story. Byleth can just be ran circles around, and we saw it by a Robin, no less. Pretty floaty, pretty just not the fastest character, and running circles around him with the arc fires, charging up the thunders, and keeping him away. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And uh, my experience from watching Byleth mainly in the past two weeks uh, has just been like top players using them like as jokes, essentially using them as just se like weird secondaries and bracket. And again, we've seen cool things. Again, um, up smash is a great tool, up tilt, great tool. Uh, back air is extremely potent, but I guess a character like Robin, you need to get into, oh, also, did you just sneeze? I cough. Okay, I was about to say, bless you, sir. But <laughs> I, I'm, I'm flattered. <laughs> Hey, I got hey, I gotta let it be known that sir, you are you are loved, you are blessed. That's Thank all I got. Homies know. always got my back. <laughs> right, but um yeah, no, Byleth, you know, an extremely strong character, uh almost literally, but uh in a in a matchup against Robin, not exactly the best. But this though, it's a little bit better. Not exactly the best either against a Robin, but up next we have a Rob. Yeah, Zucchini going for the character swap, doesn't want to get 30 would right now. Nice little aggressive combo coming out from Epic Robin, searching for it. But the side B is going to be denying any of those projectiles right now. I think this might have been a good pick from Zucchini, he's facing it pretty well. Oh, oh again, retaliation from the Robin, using the Levin Sword to his advantage. And up there, right at about ledge. And again, Rob trying to land, getting in these nares, and uh, <laughs> this is great. So I'm watching a player called Epic Robin here, in the same uh, in the same screen as a as a Rob. Why this is funny to me is, uh, do you know the player Epic Gabriel at all? I'm not too familiar with them. So Epic Gabriel currently top five in Florida, a top five play, a top five player uh, in Florida, but also one of the best in the world with Rob. And, again, his name, Epic Gabriel. We see Epic Robin, and we see Rob on the screen. So, that's a little bit funny to me, but also in the fact that, you know, kind of uh, kind of this play style from the Rob here is more or less the same. Landing with lots of, uh, with lots of nares, lots of multi-hits being used, and, uh, again, the Robin fully taking advantage, though, because Robin taking full advantage of these disjoints. That arc fire is going to be having a heyday. Yeah, it will be. He's got to avoid the side B, though, coming out from Zucchini. He's used it pretty effectively to disallow any of those projectiles from getting near. No he's way! Oh! He gets the top, sends him off the side, and now a stock up. Zucchini that could make amazing. his way back in the series. Searches for the down tilts, gets the arc fire, but it's going to be up smash that lands now in a disadvantaged state. Zucchini has made his way back onto the stage, trying to finish it off, just give as much extra percentage as he can. And he'll have an easy time recovering here. Should be, a, and uh, but again the Robin always placing that arc fire. At least, uh, at least making it annoying. But of course, Rob with one of the best recoveries in the game, purely because he could just last it for uh, for essentially forever until he runs out of gas. Uh, spin to win there. The rotor arm being used in neutral. Uh, again, interesting option, but it works. Uh, Nosferatu missing, rolling back, arc fire pressuring, Levin sword pressuring. But even then, still staying alive here is Zucchini. Finds the initial parry, but eats the knockback anyways. 164%. He dies to pretty much anything. And if this Rob in is going to charge up anything, it's probably going to be that Thunder. But he can't search for it as long as he's getting side beat. And you know what? Oh, oh that's it! Hey, bro, don't fix it! He uses hey. it for the final Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's just going to be it for that stock. And uh, even though I said before that, uh, you know, maybe maybe the 30, maybe the 30 might be possible. Believe it or not, it still is possible. Mathematically speaking, it still is possible. Purely because of the fact that Canisius, they could still pull out a three stock here and still get the extra two points from the victory. So, you know, even though Canisius ended up losing one, like, ah, uh, I mean, uh, it happens. You know, maybe maybe give the other team a chance in a sense. Um, yes, the, uh, the coveted 30 could be coming in very soon, but we shall see as finally some more points on the board from Maris as Zucchini with that character change 
really really successful great change of tempo uh great change in play style um what i really liked was the projectile play not exactly something that you could have you know too successfully uh with violeth whatsoever so you know to see the rub be pulled out to see the snipes you'll like to see it and ladies and gentlemen we're already back into our third game i mean that's the thing though with these sort of one tricky players like epic robin who specializes in one character the second that zucchini starts to get that download with the rob it looks rough for him but he's got to get back on the stage first as we're going to yoshi's story yes sir already some pressure is again marists player here already down to 53 and there already goes the rotor arm rotor arm in neutral it's a it's rough if you don't expect it but if you do expect it, it's heavily punishable, as you see right there. A, uh, you know, a very weak thunder into a dash attack, doing just about 30%. Now at 112%, this Rob could be going pretty soon. He's a fairly heavy character, and tossing that top onto the stage will buy him a lot of space. And the second he gets the Robin out of neutral, he'll have an advantage, and we saw it in the last game. The second that he gains himself an advantage that so he can win it, but he's got to avoid these arc fires using the top cleverly to buy himself more space. But doing a much better job of spacing right now is Epic Robin in the last game. Searches for the spike, though Zucchini not going to land it. Side B goes up, recovery, and now back in the disadvantage. Zucchini has just not been in a good spot at any point in this game. Oh, not just yet, but he's still in it. Actually, trying to throw up the Leaven Sword, and again, he's still pretty close. 127 to 87. Not too bad of a des uh, at a deficit. Whoa, what a combo! That's the labbing stuff that uh, true Rob mains are gonna nail every time. Throw down the top into an up smash at late percents. That's a great one. Great job there. And now moving forward, 127, 134% onto this Rob. But Epic Robin's gotta find a way to end it. And the Rob recovery is just too much for him to be able to close out on the side. Lands the back air though, and that'll do it. 40% of extra credit on the board for Zucchini, looking to bring home a win here for the side of Maris, but he's got to get through two more of Epic Robin's stocks, and at 69%, he's looking like he's lined up to do it, spacing out the side, looking for the backer, not able to find instead back on the ledge yet again. We've seen him in this position time and time again. Yes, sir, landing with Nair. Uh, <laughs> Again, uh, Gabriel, uh, the player that I mentioned before, oh. Epic Gabriel has a has a knack. No! What was what? that? What was that? I was about to say Zucchini, landing one there. But Z uh, Zucchini literally just said, I better head up. <laughs> I, I think he just wanted to put on a little bit more of a show. He knows what the percentage is at. He knows that it throws a good kill at 164%. Right. But the Robin goes down. He wanted to make it exciting for us. I, I guess so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if that's exactly the methodology to kind of approach this with, but. um. It works. <laughs> it's a positive thinking game of mine. It's a positive thinking game. And now look, he's lining up the percentage. 64% down oh on my. himself. Oh my. 37% onto the Robin here. He does have the opportunity for a ledge guard to try and space this guy out. The grab lands the throw, hits, but no more damage gotten off of it. Still at a pretty sizable percentage disadvantage. This Rob looking to close it back up. Up there, not landing, but the chain should come in. The Robin has to be able to touch the ground here. Not able to though. The, the up scoop. smash lands. Searching for it. He's charging up the runner on the edge of the stage. Again, both of these players just right at that 100% mark, getting into that kill territory, but the Rob significantly heavier. This is going to take a solid smash attack. Side B goes up, but it will get the final hit off. That knockback is huge, and this could be it. We could see the top lane. The forward air is out, and the recovery might not be enough. No, he does make it back into no the stage. Robin regaining possession, 124% down onto him, and he's spacing it out perfectly. Still alive here, Zucchini, 110 to side B, oh, my, just kill at this percent, and it will, barely does, and that's our game, ladies and gentlemen, Canisius, they, uh, they finally, finally, finally drop a game there as Epic Robin ends up losing out the first game here for Canisius, Canisius almost staying perfect with all five players winning out, but instead, it's gonna be Zucchini pushing, uh, Canisius College, or I'm sorry, Marist to a seventh point. And the game ending Canisius 25 to seven. Congratulations to Canisius, your victors for that match, but don't leave quite too soon because coming up for you, we've got St. Peter's 
going up against Niagara University. Up for you next. We'll be back with you just in a second.
right, everybody, welcome back. It's the second game of the night we've got lined up for you. It's going to be a little bit of St. Peter's taking on Niagara University. St. Peter's coming off a strong win versus Manhattan last week, but now they've got to face the monsters themselves that are Niagara. And first up in the series will be Ricardo versus Flubber, followed up by Zero Ace versus AMPC, then Gene versus Aust, Shu versus DLS, and Jazzy G versus Mr. Peyton Nader. I'm excited, and tonight, continuing on with me, it's been a great time having you. Up, mind, how you doing? I'm chilling, bro. <laughs> what a response, I, mean, I know. <laughs> well, it looks like they're chilling as well, because we're going to PS2, the pretty standard <laughs> stage pick. Uh, you know, nobody's complaining about it. Ban this, ban that. But, it, you know, it's always going to go to PS2 on the first one. It's Captain Falcon versus Joker. I'm ready for it. Let's oh, me like it. Up mine. Take us away. All right, buddy. So, Captain Falcon, Joker. This is a tough matchup. Or this is really... I, I, I don't really know how this matchup works out anymore. Because now Arsene has been, has been nerfed to an extent where, you know, just based off of damage... That our send meter is gonna go way way lower than expected, and also Captain Falcon super oppressive. Joker not exactly one of the best characters to deal with, you know, uh, oppression or you know just just aerial interactions in general. But Joker's main role at this point is more bait and punish, and you can't exactly do that against the Captain Falcon. Uh, of course, with the R send gonna be able to boot on so so much damage and not only a lot of damage but also be able to edge guard pretty efficiently which is one of its best options against captain falcon who has one of the worst recoveries in this game at the moment oh, oh my, god. my god so not only did ricardo just wait out half of arsene i regret he what followed i said it up by taking him off stage spiking him down he still hasn't been touched it was a perfect stock Oh my god, and he's still going. This is nuts! The, the oh JV! No. Please! Yo, 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 yo! Can we see a JV on stream? Please! Please, please, please! That's all I want! Oh, it's all game. I want! It's all I two want! Perfect stocks in a row! Please, please! Okay, zero, he's zero. Down air, neutral air, 20%. No! Neutral air. No way! No way! Zero percent! Yes! Ricardo pops off for the first game! That's amazing! Ricardo up to bat first. We're talking about, oh man. Joker can't deal with oppression, but Joker can be really good off stage. There wasn't a single moment in that game where the Falcon was in disadvantage. You know why? Because he wasn't hit once. That is the first time in my three years of commentating Smash Brothers that I have seen a perfect, uh, a perfect game. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a JV4 stock. Are you kidding me? Oh my, oh my, I am out of my chair right now, Ricardo. Clip it. Flubber the goods right now. Oh my God. Clip it and say. ship it. Move into a second match after that. <laughs> I don't even know anymore. Like I said, clip it and ship it, my friend, because good Lord, it's happened. Oh, uh, we've reached our peaks. This is it. What do you even do now? So Flubber just <laughs> had his mind boggled, right? <laughs> and so moving into that, do you character swap where do you, where do you take this? You got to play the game for all of about 30 seconds after all. Right. <laughs> what, what do you take from a match like that? You, you don't take anything. That was just Falcon being Falcon. Like, you, you'll, again, I haven't seen, you know, too many Falcon players in this game. But Falcon is classic. Falcon's play style has not changed you know, in, in years, essentially. So, you know, to, to see that, that oppressive playstyle coming out again in the same game against a new character and Joker, essentially, not, a, not being able to do anything. Again, like I mentioned, he has no reactions midair. Like, that, that is one of Joker's, you know, worst points, that he just simply cannot react to, you know, oppression midair. Uh, of... Uh, essentially of falcon because falcon most of his most of his quote-unquote oppression is mostly uh melee based um but otherwise joker had a single opportunity in advantage uh on stage the drag down to a couple months ago when all anybody did was complain about joker right B purely because <laughs> of mk leo i'm not gonna lie but again joker 
insane at stage at, at stage control purely because again drag downs are insane his damage output is nuts um he has he has a lot of wide uh, a wide swinging moves in a sense so pretty much he puts in an input it's bound to hit as long as he's standing you know what i mean and that just wasn't the case whatsoever because he didn't hit him once i can't get over that door he didn't hit him once that entire game <laughs> Okay, okay. So what do you do if you're flubber? How do you get that out of your head? You don't. Like you, you have to go into the second game with just a blank. You have to push that out. But how do you push it out? You don't. You couldn't get a hit on the guy. That's insane. You don't. I mean, like, I would love to be optimistic. But, like, I don't think I've ever seen someone come back from a JV. Like, like we've seen JV3 stocks, which is Smash 4. Um, but we're talking about a JV4 stock. That is three entire stocks that is a solid uh that is maybe a solid two to three minutes of you not being able to hit your opponent once back in smash 4 maybe two stocks could be taken within a minute you can get over that that is a long period of time for you to just get walloped so i don't really know what to tell you but um best of luck to flubber he still has a chance, technically. And, oh no, this can't be any better. This is not any better. This is not better. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a Link on board. And uh, th this is not any better. Like, I'm just telling you straight up. Offstage pressure is going to be... Oh my god, he hit him once. All right, so pro projectiles are going to be sick. Uh, Captain Falcon can't exactly deal with those uh, in neutral. But, um... Off stage. Oh my god, please stop! What are you doing? Come on! He hit him once! Like he came to clean up all of my He's about to play all five games and just like take names. He hit him once, Door! Once! You angered the beast. What on? That, that was his critical mistake, was hitting him. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm freaking out. Alright, so finally we actually have. You know, more damage, uh, more damage from Flubber, 55% so far, uh, actually takes a pretty decent damage, that's, uh, that's Link's main, uh, you know, kind of main takeaway is that he's just the strongest out of all the Links, um, most of his moves have, uh, higher damage output, also he has an explo- um, a bigger explosive, and it's also used as more of a mine, and, you know, same properties as most of the Links, his offstage pressure is going to be great. Um, his control in neutral is also pretty good. His boomerang has a little bit more uh, frame data than uh, than most other ones. His up B is a lot bigger. You know, everything of the sort. But I don't even think that matters whatsoever if your name is Ricardo and you play Captain Falcon. Because look at it. Oh, fair? No. Oh, no. Fair? Oh. oh, the second hit of oh. fair doesn't hit. Um, He's looking for it again. He's looking for that triple fair into the knee combo off the side. You can feel him just fishing for it. Dodging, waiting for his opportunity, and at 66%, he oh he could go down. These smash attacks from Link are no joke. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, the <laughs> F smash is just pretty strong to say the least. But um, what? Okay, D uh, no, what? Oh what? God. You're joking, Ricardo? Mercy, he was mercy. dead. Ricardo was dead. How did he even survive? How did he even up be? How did he just six stock flubber there? Or oh my god! All right, like I said before, ladies and gentlemen, clip it and ship it because this one is already over. That that's an eight to zero oh start. Uh, uh what? Door, explain it, <laughs> please. I I can't I can't speak anymore. I'm I'm flabbergasted. Well, here's your in depth analysis. Uh, to break it down. Ricardo took Flubber. Yeah. And he pushed him away from the middle of the stage. He, he, he took, a bunch of times. Specifically he, six. He took Flubber and pushed him somewhere else? Pu yeah, he, he pushed him somewhere else <laughs> that he definitely didn't want to be. And Flubber blinked his eyes one time and the, and the series was over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. oh my god. Okay. Well, that, here's the thing, though. It is a crew battle. So, Ricardo, <laughs> as impressive as right, it was, right. the next player is not Ricardo. 
The next player is Zero Ace, who we have seen before coming up against AMPC, and I can't quite remember which one of the two it is, AMPC or DLS. Navik and I have put our money on it multiple times trying to guess which one is the Kirby main, and we get it wrong every time, so I'm not even going to try. But AMPC <laughs> could be coming out with a Kirby, and I believe it's either that or a Nessa. We start seeing come up against Zero Ace. I think this would be a much better matchup as a Niagara need to make up a serious point deficit. Right. Um... Yeah, this is this is pretty much the worst start that you could have in this format of crew battle purely because this is almost literally the most points that you can take at a crew battle like this. It's not almost it is definitively the most points you could right. be in the lead right now. Right. Ricardo Eight. has made St. Peter's very comfortable. No, uh, absolutely. Um so Zero Ace, uh let's let's see how they did last week. So St. Peter's defeating out Manhattan and Zero Ace just so happens to be the other player, uh, one of the three players that ended up winning a set for St. Peter's, um, he actually won in pretty dominant fashion. He won the first game by a, by a one stock and the second game by a two stock, giving his team six points extra over Manhattan. And um, yeah, I, I don't know about this one because again, AMPC, not a player that we've seen play so far this season, really because they got uh, Niagara, or uh, I'm sorry, yeah. Niagara ended up getting, uh, you know, the forfeit win last week over Quinnipiac. Um, do you have any clue if uh, if AMPC is uh, is more dominant or if AMPC has a a little bit more of a good history in crew battle specifically? So one thing about this Niagara roster, they're all pretty consistent. I wouldn't say any one player is super standout here, and I think St. Peter's might be a little bit more up and down here. I don't know if it's really possible for a team to be able to have like that many consistent performances like we saw out of ricardo and so zero ace versus the ampc i'm foreseeing to be a much more even matchup and like i said it's only the first game into this series and so heading into the second one really anything can happen and eight and an eight point deficit can be made up pretty readily here by niagara and right it's and again eight point deficit uh, especially early on there is a possibility for them to make it back. But again, there are some very strong players to look at here um, <clears throat> for this St. Peter's side. And at the very end, you see Jazzy G there. Jazzy G ended up winning his battle last week by, if I'm not mistaken, four stocks, giving his team six stocks by the very end. And again, St. Peter's, the three players that ended up you know, giving them points was Ricardo, Zero Ace, and Jazzy G. They just those three players combined gave them 19 points last week. Kind of nuts. All right. Oh, so we do have we do have the Kirby main on board now as we actually get again Zero Ace versus AMPC Zero Ace on the Piranha Point. When was the last time you saw a matchup like this? Never. I've never seen Piranha Plant v Kirby. Um, again, coming from Central Florida, we do have a pretty talented uh, Piranha Plant main known as Diz. But otherwise, uh, you would... I, I don't know what to think of this matchup. I, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I, I, for it. Both of these players are an absolute treat to watch. AMPC is something that'll surprise you. His Kirby is potent. He eats up the gas. Trying to send it right back out and uses the up B to get away from the up smash, but instead eats the side smash. It's going to take the first stock off of AMPC. Zero is getting him an early lead here, but not too sizable that AMPC can't bring it back right now. Nice smash attack. Will look to put the percentage up, but he's got to find a way to finish this one up. Kirby does have a lot of options to do it, though. Uh, I guess so, but also Kirby is, you know, one of, one of the lightest characters in this game, and we're seeing the matchup between, you know, one of the, one of the, Lightest player, uh, uh, I'm sorry, lightest characters in the game, and also one of the strongest hitting characters in the game. Piranha Plant is pretty god dang nuts in terms of damage output, and you see there an up tilt at about 110 ended up killing off to the right. So, again, AMPC, a hard time getting in here, but for the fact that he's just been getting essentially clobbered this entire time, he's still putting in some decent jam uh, decent damage. Uh, hard reads isn't exactly what he should be going for, but it's tough to even get through to a Piranha Plant with a character that doesn't exactly have 
any options for projectiles and an up tilt at 80 is going to be able to finish off the stock that's that's kind of nuts again good performance from uh, ampc but zero ways that was just nuts yeah, I think AMPC did a pretty good job of closing out that first stock. Unfortunately, just fell behind. I think he ate a few too many of those of the poison gas, but that ended up being a lot of the reason he was losing percentage. I think if he just cleans that up, he could look a lot better in the second game. We could see a really different look coming out from Niagara University. I think though, Zero Ace on the other side did a really good job of just playing safe. He understood the matchup. He knew AMPC was going to be going for a lot of those upbeats. And just spaced him out, allowed him to press into his shield, didn't let too much pressure come on to him, and then counterattacked out of shield. And that's where a lot of that damage came from. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's really just a piranha plant specialty uh, in that case. And again, I don't exactly know if, you know, Kirby is going to be the best matchup for this one. For what it was... Uh, you know, for what we just watched, AMPC essentially made the absolute best of it because Kirby's specialty essentially is offstage pressure. Uh, can survive for a really long time offstage, has a really good recovery. Um, you know, spiking is a big, uh, spiking is a big plus for Kirby. Uh, gimping is a big plus for Kirby. But even then, against Piranha Plant, that's almost impossible. Uh, Piranha Plant's upbeat is one of the, you know, one of the strongest in this game. And I think AMPC is going to realize that real, real quick if he does attempt to go back to that Kirby. Um, again, there are just a lot of other matchups that could fit this, you know, a little bit better. And I'm hoping to potentially see a different one if AMPC does potentially have a secondary. Again, we're just going to have to see what happens as we get into game two. All right, coming back. I'm assuming AMPC is probably going to stay on the Kirby. We haven't, I don't think we've ever seen him play anything else other than it seems like his specialty here and i think if he cleans up his play he took a lot of really unnecessary percentage of damage in that last match and so i think if he just focuses a little bit more on not taking damage and that sounds simple that sounds a little a little three head but it really <laughs> is that just avoiding the damage he's able to find it pretty consistently but he doesn't need to be taking these really hard trades with the poison right just don't get hit that that yeah, yeah it's that simple right <laughs> Omega yeah, that, that easy. <laughs> I, th I think taking his time, though. He needs to choose his, choose his shots a little bit better, and I think he's right in this one. He lost a lot of percentage to stuff like that, and if you can fix that one error, I think it nets him a lot of gain here. And I don't know if you guys saw that message at the very beginning, but you gotta go fast. I think that just might be the way to get back into this one. And oh, oh, oh! Can we can we see a gimp again? It's it's almost impossible to see against a piranha plant, but he's trying to go for gimps more and more, almost going for disrespect at this point. And uh, <laughs> he was actually able to heal off of the spike ball. That that's pretty impressive. Uh, but even then, zero ace still booty on the damage. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm searching for uh -oh. it yet again. It's a MPC, but that piranha plant upbeat. This is too strong. It's gonna get him back to stage pretty much every time. Yeah, I, uh, he's trying to go for, uh, for, you know, he's trying to go for inhale into, uh, into footstool, so not exactly too great of an option against Piranha Plant, especially because of the fact that that upbeat literally just armors through, uh, you know, just the inhale and just a very strong F smash will do it. Yeah, Zero is swinging for the fences. The side smashes haven't failed him yet, but now it is a little bit of momentum starting to add up here for AMPC. We want to see him start to take some stocks off this Piranha Plant, but he's got to start somewhere. Playing very close to the ledge. The Patui is just such a big threat, though, from Zero Ace, and he's just guarding the ledge so effectively versus a character that should theoretically be really good on ledge. Theoretically so. Oh, a little bit of server problems. We're, we'll probably get back into it, but... Yeah, theoretically speaking, Kirby is a great, great character off of ledge. And, uh, no, he ended up letting go. Um, neutral B with... Ooh. No way. Okay, and the Patui ended up hitting no matter what. But, hey, great response from AMPC. But, um, I forget what the neutral B for Piranha Plant is. Would that be, uh, Poison Cloud? Now... Looking for it. the Kirby just trying to close the space at 115% himself. This game going. Oh no! Oh, it gets him! 
That's nuts. All right. Fatui, the spike ball. Just, just kind of laying around, just just kind of vibing, you know what I mean? And uh, AMPC, unfortunately, again, going for that inhale, uh, that inhale gimp doesn't exactly work out in his favor either. But again, this is Kirby's, you know, strongest aspect. He can go, you know, for, for these kind of more burst damage -y types. Great oh, strings, to say the least. Multi-hits. Um, maybe even some drag downs if we could see them. But again, AMPC having such a... Tough time, not only getting in, but also killing. At the moment, Zero Ace at 104, and he just won't die. Oh no! Almost dead again. He's pulling some tricks out of his sleep, hiding here in the smoke, confusing AMPC as to what he's doing. Going for that down B, though, it's gonna be the kill option, though. Coming out of Zero Ace, the side smash ends that one. It's gonna be another two stock on the board, but a significantly better game there for AMPC compared to the first. Yeah, absolutely, and again, even even more dominant in that one. Again, NPC, valiant effort, but it just so happened to be that the uh, that the plant gang they're the ones in front today, and uh, that's gonna be a fourteen to zero scoreline. Uh, early on like this, that's that uh, that's again not a scoreline that you want to be seeing. And already looking to get into our next match, it's going to be Gene versus Aust in the third match of the series. That's not over yet. Niagara has some of their heaviest hitters lined up at the end. It's Aust, DLS, and Mr. Paytonator. Mr. Paytonator, especially a pretty big threat here for their side. So it's certainly not over yet. That's kind of the fun of this crew battle format is you really don't know what to expect. You can put some of the stronger players at the end. There's a lot of strategy that can go into just how you line up your players. And still some... Still opportunity for them to come back. A 14-point scoreline is definitely possible to come back from. We've seen, you know, we we've we've seen worse in a sense where, again, uh, we've seen I think 15 or 16 become backable. But uh, beyond this, beyond this scoreline or beyond two sets, things slip out of hand, and essentially it makes it mathematically impossible because three sets go by. You've already lost. You've already lost, you know, the, the best of five, quote unquote. Yeah. And well, that's one of the things, though, is the further down you go, the more and more your mental game is getting tested here. Niagara obviously has some confidence in their last remaining players to try and bring this one back, trying to hold the, on to that mental game. But the more points you go down, the more you think it starts to slip here. Definitely so. Again, we are still waiting. Uh, next up on board in this crew battle between St. Peter's and, and Niagara here. Let's see who we got. We have ourselves Show and DLS. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. That's the one after. Uh, our third game is going to be Gene versus Aust117 or 117. Um, Gene last week uh, ended up actually losing out his set uh, against Manhattan's Martin. Um, and again, at this point, I... I have, I haven't seen Aust one seventeen play. Do you have any clue how any any one of these two players play? Not too much information on the teams right now in the current season, but Aust is a player that's been with Niagara for a good bit of time. He's been on the roster. He's proven himself time and time again that he's willing to be there, and he's he's got the skills to back it up. But he's got a pretty big gap to close. But if there's a man to do it for Niagara, he's got to start it here. Like you mentioned, that game three really is starting to be that break point for going down 0-3 in the series. It's not a place you want to be, and it's all up to us to break it. Again, still picks and bans going down, and it seems as if we're going to be going to town and city. Town and city, yeah, we're certainly interesting. Uh, interesting is an understatement. Those platforms are uh, probably, in my, in my opinion, one of the most fun uh, fun stage options as far as everything goes. But <laughs> Gene is finally into our lobby, so we should get into it real quick here. Uh, last second prediction, which way do you see this matchup going? Do you think Gene is able to continue on the storm that St. Peter has been able to put on? Or do you think Niagara kind of gains a little bit of a foothold here, maybe takes a match or two off of this devastating side we've come out? seen out of st peter's again it's tough to say because we don't exactly know the matchup either but just looking at you know gene from last week he wasn't able to take away uh you know a game in his best of three so 
this has given him, you know, kind of kind of some time to kind of refresh his mind, kind of get back into things. Um, you know, maybe even develop a new play style, develop a new character. Who knows at this point? But in terms of this entire crew battle, I do see St. Peter's uh, pulling this one out. Really because, again, uh, we've gone through two of their powerhouses. And let's not forget that they still have an incredible anchor at the very bottom known as Jazzy G coming up in our fifth game. And currently, we are in our third game. Let's see what these uh, what these other players can do as, again, we're about to get in to our third game of this crew battle. It's St. Peter's versus Niagara. Oh, right, okay. Into the server, it's going to be Jeans Lucas versus us captain falcon looking at the same thing as ricardo did earlier looking to I clean mean, up some stocks here on the falcon i, I think it's tough <laughs> i think it's tough to say if uh if someone can necessarily pull off the same success as ricardo because believe it or not you know again <laughs> not only in my casting have i never seen a, a jv4 but i have also never done a jv4 that that is just way too tough i mean that that one doesn't surprise me at like Oh, oh, you, <laughs> you, you sneaky, you sneaky lad. All right, what's not sneaky right now is 77% that Austin's already taken right now, doubling up the percentage. So Luke is coming out of Gene, putting on some pretty good pressure, but I like the spacing that Austin is using right now, trying to close a lot of the gaps, not allowing this nest to play any projectile game. The back throw though kills. I think the DI might have just been a little bit off there from Austin, causing him to lose that stock. Yeah, just a little bit, but then again, you're not gonna expect to die there. Uh, back throw at around what? At around 90%? Shouldn't be able to kill there, but being as close as the ledge as it would have been, uh, certainly dangerous. But again, still an opportunity here for Gene to extend his lead. As again, still pulling out the PK fire, still pressuring with the multi hits. You know, lots of disjoints all over the place. Something that Captain Falcon can't exactly deal with all too much against Lucas. So uh, again, this one, this one slowly slipping out of hand. As now, you know, it's a full stock leave. We're gonna get a forward throw. Luke is approaching. Oh, oh my God, with a PK fire again, and that's another stock. Yeah, forward throw into the fire. Probably not what Austin's expecting to go up against here. He was doing pretty good on the first stock, but it feels like Gene kind of has a hard read right now. He's running all over, reading the rolls, reading the dodges. He knows exactly what Austin's going to do. And at 62% on this last stock, it's not looking very high. 101% though. Austin can still manage to take a stock or two away. Take those points out of St. Peter's hand. And it could be very important getting later into the series, moving later on into the season. You know, absolutely, and that's that's the story here. I mean, we we talk about these teams. You know, maybe maybe they can't exactly win out the crew battle. It happens, but because of this format, you can actually at least get some consolation points for your just for stats by the end of the season. And look at that F smash is gonna finish it off a three stock here for St. Peter's. And uh, again, that's not a situation that you want to be in because again st peter's they're gonna keep growing that stock that stock differential and now niagara esports they're gonna start to falter a little bit and they desperately need some points on the board because like i mentioned before consolation is going to be huge by the end of the season and can potentially break a huge tie to make it into playoffs yeah, and like we mentioned, those playoffs are coming up later on in the season. But right now, going to zoom in just a little bit to the match that's going on. This match is a breaking point. Not only is it the third match out of five right there in the middle, but if Ost can't put points up on the board, then Gene's going to close out that point lead in a way that Niagara cannot come back from. You're absolutely right, so... Again, let's uh, let's see what can happen here because again, I I do believe in us potentially here. That Captain Falcon pick, you know, wasn't uh, wasn't a bad one. He certainly kept it close, but I think at this point we we need to see some more combo game because he would start up, you know, he would start off with potentially an up air, but he would either you know whiff the up air or whiff the follow up. And, you know, I think some mix-ups here would be really nice. So start off the string, go back to the ground, start up your jumps again so you at least get that jump reset or potentially some more offstage pressure because Lucas sometimes can be very unreliable with his recovery. Again, it's all going to come down to, you know, the decision-making in this next game because Aust, again, has to keep his team in this one or else uh, Niagara is going to be mathematically done in this crew battle. 
Yeah, moving on to the second game, we are going to Battlefield. So a little bit of a change up here from Niagara. I wouldn't be surprised to see a character swap as well come out from Aust. Might just stay the same, though. It's going to be oh. Yoshi now for Aust versus the Lucas coming out from Gene staying on the same character. This is this is awesome. This is a great pick. Uh, Yoshi, super impressive against uh, against Lucas. Has incredible aerial drift, so Lucas can't exactly get a, get a linear hit with his aerials. And, uh, I mean, overall, this should be really good. All depends on, you know, how he plays this Yoshi. Because, again, he has some very low frame data moves, but he also has some high frame data moves, including that fair that you just saw there. Um, you know, f tilt also takes forever to recover from. And uh, things like down B, those are going to be some sick mix-ups to pull off there. As we already saw earlier, oppressing that shield, almost breaking it to a sense. And uh, again, already some great moves, trying to stack up the aerials here. Oh, even using a side B, not a move that most Yoshis use, but he actually gets two hits out of it. Yeah, now 90 to 103% here. That Yoshi, his nose is huge and the damage is even bigger right now. He's looking a lot better than he was in the first <laughs> match, but he's got to get in on these PK fires. He's no! the free, just going to be first stock over to Gene, but it's not over yet as a 90%. He'll be eating the nose of Yoshi going down himself 0% to 0%. We're playing a two-stock game, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, <laughs> first of all, you're correct. He does have a big nose. But uh, but I think at this point, I think uh, I think Lucas's hitboxes are, uh, are bigger than Yoshi's nose because, good lord, do you see the size of that up smash? Do you see the size of that nair? Lucas is just swinging for the hills, and now the Yoshi, Aust 117, already down to 95% in the matter of seconds. And I'm starting to get a little bit worried right now. We're seeing the same thing that we did in game one where Osk really falls off at the second stock. He's got to clean it up if he wants his way in. He's shown he can do it just before. We're going to have to find out if he can. Lands a, a weird hitbox going downwards on Lucas. Not quite looking for the PK rocket, but at 135%, this Yoshi will go down to a lot of things. It could be that back throw again, but no. The up tilt from Yoshi lands 82%. He's starting to even it up. Really starting to, and that's, that's mainly Yoshi there for you. Heavy hitting in every way possible. And uh, again, Lucas, uh, essentially a pin cushion in this matchup because Yoshi, almost every move that he pulls out has incredibly high knockback. And at 112, almost anything is going to kill at this point. You saw him swinging for the hills with a fair, nair, up air. Really anything that he can pull off will kill. But he's also at 176. Lucas, also a very strong boy. And a yeet back throw there is going to finish off the stock. And up air at the platform, not going to kill. And no, oh, no. no. That's the last thing that Oz needed there. He was at zero. Oh no, a two stock victory there as Aust, he was on the cusp of getting himself a, uh, you know, at least a consolation stock for his team there, but mathematically speaking, that's going to take Niagara out of the running in this crew battle. So now it's Shu versus DLS, and they're playing for pride. Now the same thing that we saw out of the previous matches, these players looking to take home some wins for their university and up first out of these last two matches, like we mentioned, Shu versus DLS, starting to close that gap. I think DLS and Mr. Paytonator are probably the best options that Niagara has for taking stocks and maybe taking some wins off of St. Peter's, but it's a tall order now as we head into pick ban. Absolutely, and... Again, mathematically speaking, the most points that uh, that Niagara can somehow get here is 16. So they are officially kaput. They are officially out of this one. So again, we are still waiting for uh, for this next uh, picks and bands here. So you know what? We're going to get into a quick break. Ladies and gentlemen, grab yourself some snacks. Grab yourself a drink because this is not our only crew battle for the night. This is actually our second one so far. And we still have a third one to go. On our schedule here, if you guys will look over to the slide, uh, we have ourselves. Uh, that third game there, that 905 game, has actually been canceled. So instead, we're going to get Siena College versus Manhattan College at the same time slot of 905. So, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned because we will be right back uh, after a very short break with the St. Peter's versus Diagra crew battle.
And ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Game four on the board here as we get ourselves, let's see here, we have ourselves Show versus DLS, and we're going to be starting on FD. Show, of course, on the left, representing St. Peter's University, Niagara, one of their last hopes here for a win, DLS on the right playing this. We've seen a surprising amount of nests tonight, but the Lucina looking to put an end to it, 70%. Already loading up, charges up the shield breaker. Doesn't quite get it. Nice PK fire, buys him a bit of space. A pretty even game so far. The bat lands. Nicely done. Searches for the flash, but not gonna get it. Now setting him off stage. This game starting off very quickly. Search for the rocket, but he's just gonna grab the ledge with it. Could he SD? Could we see another? No! no he the smash off the double ledge grab. Yeah, you hate to see it. You can't be grabbing the ledge like that. Uh, that's just gonna be the stock too, and oh no, he's also swinging for the hills. He's going for the uh, the PK rocket, and Show is having none of it. Show only at eighty five percent, still on his first stock up tilt, and it feels like this Ness is having trouble going anywhere. He's so floaty, and that sword of Lucina just makes up for so much range. Now trying to find himself at some distance away from Lucina, but he keeps trying to run in here and it's just not going to be working for him. Back through there, that's going to send Show super far away, but somehow still surviving. DLS still with stage control here, but actually ends up losing it. A Show back in neutral, actually with the advantage, following him off stage, trying to go for a counter, but the, oh, the PK rocket a little bit too fast to connect with a counter, but that's actually a great option there for Show that he just discovered. And uh, if anything, a fair would have actually come out a little bit faster there and would have actually hit DLS before the uh, before the PK rocket even came out. So potentially an early kill could have been had there, but instead DLS is going to absolutely yeet Show off the left side, going coast to coast with the back throw. Yeah, that next back throw is no joke. A solid kill option. Unfortunate for him that he didn't kill earlier. Now at 143%, almost gets red by the fourth. Smash not quite going to take him. Instead, it's going to be the dash attack. Doesn't do it. Great DI there out of DLS. Gets himself back on stage. Gets himself another opportunity here at the ledge grab. Goes for the PK flash. Unable to convert off of it, though. Instead, it's going to be Show taking the second stock off of DLS, making it 1-2 to two right now. DLS has a gap to close, but he can do it. Absolutely can again show. You know, as a Lucina should theoretically be losing out this one, but it mainly comes down to stage control, which DLS Ooh. is giving way too much of, and that is more or less the uh, the Ness and Lucas special and SD there the off of the uppy and. Again, unfortunate situation once again as Show takes back yet another point here for St. Peter's. I feel like we've seen a lot of Ness and Lucas SD tonight. It's from nobody in particular. I feel like the character's just been been cursed on this day. Right. And again, 23 points on the board there. And <laughs> all right, we <laughs> we're getting close. We're getting close to that little matchup that we that we saw earlier we're getting close to that uh to that 30 point threshold i don't know if we're ever gonna get an opportunity this season to see 30 points but uh i don't know about you door but we're getting dangerously close to it i mean we saw the jv4 stock what else what else are we waiting for other than the 30 points but Honestly, Niagara are looking to put an end to it. I think DLS might be able to do it. That last game looked pretty decent outside of the SD. He wasn't doing too bad. Mr. Paintnado lining up against Jazzy G, I think, will probably be the matchup to, to really define this series. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because, again, you have, you know, have Jazzy G, who in himself is a very dominant player. But also, I mean, if Niagara were to get that W over Jazzy G... That would be really good for their morale. That's at least something for them to take away from this crew battle. And uh, moving on into the next couple of weeks, you know, they have a lot of film to study at the moment. They have five games to study going here on out. And uh, again, there's a lot of things to work on. And there's a lot of things that they are actually doing very successfully. Something that I'm seeing here from uh, DLS is, you know, a little bit too, too much of an overabundance of that uppy. He should be using a lot more... A lot. Well, first of all, oh, first of all, a taunt. Second of all, I respect uh, that. I, yeah, yeah, I guess so. But um, here comes Show. Uh oh. Oh. 
Did he jump? Yeah, he did. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. I, I I, was a, a no, he was, he was just too far away. So, what, was, what I was about to say, DLS needs to be a lot more oppressive on Show's shield. Uh, you saw there a grab, perfect start. Multi hits are also really good, uh, really good against Lucina. Um, good melee attacks are also great. He has a projectile, might as well use it. Um, but again, we're not exa we're not exactly seeing most of that up tilt, a move that we haven't really seen at all from DLS. An incredible move against Lucina, especially when she's on the verge of either landing or in the platform right above him. Yeah, and now. Looking at it, it's two stocks to three. DLS could look to take one, maybe two. Could close out with three if he continues playing the way he is. It's cleaned it up a bit since the first game. Not fishing for those PK rockets anymore. And uh, I think he might just be able to pulse them out for us. But he's got a hell of a task ahead of him. Show looking to end it as early as he can. Trying to hold on to every stock like it's his baby. Nice little spot dodge. Allows the Lucas to go through him. Gets him a stage advantage and will buy him the offstage kill. Oh my, okay. Well, it just so happens to be now that uh, that show is now two stocks up and oh, okay, down smash will do it. Down smash is usually something that we see uh, to kind of oppress ledge, but to cover the roll, that's even better. Yeah, oh. searching for the PK rocket again, getting interrupted. Oh, oh he on. goes for the counter on it. Not quite going to be had by Show. Looking for the style points, so though. 46% oh, no. on the last stock of DLS. He's looking for the counter again, but the counter just comes out too slow to counter the rocket. Right, and that's why I was saying that Fair would be such a good move here for Show to pull off. And he actually went for the counter again. DLS, thinking his lucky stars that he just has not died with these, you know, close to or uh, close to ledge upbees here. And uh, and again. Getting punished over and over again, and again, misspacing here from Sho. He's getting closer and closer to punishing. Finally, coming back is DLS, but again, the get up takes a little bit too long, and Sho with the down smash is gonna end up finishing it off. Beautiful work from Sho. DLS, a couple of things to work on, but ultimately, he did put up a very valiant effort. Yeah, a solid attempt there by DLS. Was able to make that stock lead not as significant as it could have been. Pulled off a lot of those close ones where you see the game ending on one player from St. Peter's, for example, ending around that 100% mark where you kind of want to take that last stock off them, lessen that point advantage a little bit more. And they were closing those stocks out at least, which is pretty important as far as points are concerned later on into the season. And now, finally, it will be the matchup that we've been waiting for this whole crew battle. It's Jazzy G versus Mr. Peytonator as we load into the last one. Just waiting for some players to get on and pick bands to come through. So I think we'll head off to just a couple seconds of break while we log a player into the lobby. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned.
<laughs> oh, indeed, my friend. Because okay. we're about Let's to go. get right into it. And um, look at these picks. Jazzy G's Palutena. And we have a player coming up here with the Byleth. Byleth, of course, coming out just a couple of weeks ago. Mr. Paytonator pulling it off. Not the first one we've seen tonight, though. Mr. Paytonator right. looking to close it out on the Byleth. A pretty heavy-hitting character. And uh, I think maybe a clever pick here to run into Jazzy G. Maybe something he's not super familiar with because Jazzy G's Palutena is a threat. No, absolutely. When, uh, well, Jazzy G at the moment being one of the more dominant players in the entire league right now. Last week, garnering his team six points uh, into the crew battle at the very end. And again, Jazzy G still mounting up the points, mapping, uh, sorry, uh, mounting on the damage. And, uh, you know, Mr. Paintnator right now it's weird to say it, but I think he's pressing too many buttons as Byleth. Uh, although Byleth has some really strong B moves, they take forever to come out. And against a Palutena, Palutena is incredibly oppressive against really any opportunity. You see right there, already pulling out, you know, you already, uh, I think it's the Explosive Flame. And also, Nair, Up Air, these multi-hits, super, super oppressive, especially against Byleth. Combo, oh my god. Forward throw into Explosive Flame. Again, gonna be caught landing. Violet has a super, super hard time landing. And Palutena will do nothing but up smash you and F smash you on your way up. What a great finish to stock though. Jazzy G used the Explosive Flame to force the jump here out of Paytonator. Force him to jump over it. Followed it up by forcing out the F smash, then forcing out the jump, and then going up and finishing it up with the up air, and just oh. controlling where Mr. Payton plays on the stage, but at 140%, he could be looking to take the stock of the bounce, nice. and there it is! Beautiful work from Paytonator making that comeback, and of course, using the power of that Violet to, you know, at least, uh, at least take Jazzy G down a peg or two, but here comes the uh, the famed Palutena combos and whoa whoa the hard read that he tried to get on that explosive flame was a uh, oh that was snazzy for Jazzy because look at that he went for the uppy onto the let oh onto the platform that's that oh that's that new stuff that you love to see look at this so far from Jazzy G pulling off the uppy oh oh my God teleport it's the roll through it's it. Again, I'm still trying to wrap my wrap my head around it. So he uses teleport onto the platform, so it actually acts as if it's a landing, but also transitions him into, you know, directly into a move. That is some sick movement here from Palutena recently, and Jazzy G taking full advantage of it. I don't I don't know if Paytonator can have an answer for that. I know Byleth has a lot of different ways of taking these stocks off. A lot of hard hitting moves. He's just got to land them. We've seen the jab time and time again start to rack up the percentage on Palutena. And that arrow, like you just saw, that has huge kill potential right around 120%. It's all but guaranteed. But he's got to get there first. 80% left on this Palutena. He's trying to take another stock and he nice. will successfully there. I think that was a down smash. I mean, out Byleth's a little bit new, but. 96%, he's got a taller ahead of him on this final stock. Absolutely, and again, still still looking for, oh, actually still looking to make it, and if I'm not mistaken, he was actually dead at that point, but Jazzy G still pouring some salt into the wounds of Niagara here, as their score is going to be extended to 28 to 0, meaning that Niagara still has not taken a single game so far in this crew battle. They have one more opportunity here as Peyton Nader has a game two against his opponent. And picks and bans will come out, of course, in the advantage of Niagara. St. Peter's gets banned two stages. Niagara picks one. And so I think, think that Peyton Nader will be able to take it somewhere a little bit more comfy cozy.